What is up, my people? This is Mr. Two Week, creator of the Digital SAT Crash Course Series. And in this video, I'm going to teach you the most powerful strategy you can apply right now to get a massive score increase on the Digital SAT Math section. And that's learning to take full advantage of the Desmos Online Calculator. Desmos is an absolute game changer for the Digital SAT. You can use it to solve some of the toughest questions on the test in just a matter of seconds. And I'll show you how to do that in this video. Oh, and by the way, if you like this video, you definitely want to get access to the full version of the course. Just click the link in the description below to access the full version. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy Digital SAT Math Crash Course, Day 1, Part 1. All right, welcome everybody to Digital SAT Math Crash Course. This is uh, Day 1. This is Part 1. And uh, I've got good news, really good news for anybody that's been struggling with SAT Math, which is that... The SAT is just not nearly as hard as everybody thinks it is. If you can look at the questions the right way and use the right strategies, um, we can really, really simplify uh, this test and, and make the test a, a whole lot easier than you probably think it is. So we're going to focus on uh, some of the most commonly tested concepts and some of the, the most useful, most powerful simplification strategies um, for, uh, for this test. We've got a handful of students with us today. Um, and uh, I want to go over, I want to begin, actually, you guys have that uh, Rules for SAT Math document. You should have that in front of you. And I want to go to my Rules for SAT Math here. And uh, if you struggle with algebra, I think you're going to like these SAT rules. I would love, uh, Ruby, if you would please uh, read rule number one for us on my Rules for SAT Math. We're going to focus on these first two rules in the uh, first two days of the session. Go ahead and read rule number one for us, please, to start. Avoid algebraic options whenever possible. Instead, plug in values for the variables and solve. Yeah, I would argue there's only a handful of questions, uh, Ruby and everybody else, uh, on each digital SAT math section that require a specific step-by-step -step algebraic operation. The vast majority of the questions, even those that involve variables, you can either plug in values in place of the variables, or if you can use the Desmos calculator the right way, um, you can solve them without doing a single complex algebraic operation. So um, you got to be careful, like, not to go into like math class mode on these questions. They're not just test. They're not testing you on these questions the same way they were tested in a in a math class. Um, you just don't have to do much step by step operations. So we'll focus on rule number two, uh, rule number one on day two of the course. Um, we're going to start primarily with the Desmos calculator. And that's uh, that's rule number two. Ruby, go ahead and read rule number two for us as well, please. Use the Desmos calculator whenever possible. To solve for an unknown variable, put all the terms on one side of the equation and graph the equation. The solutions will be the x-intercepts of the graph. I'm, I'm going to stop you real quick. Does that make any sense here when I say to solve for an unknown variable? If you put all the terms on one side of an equation and then set the other side to zero and you graph that equation, the solutions will be the x-intercepts of the graph. Does that make any sense why that might be the case? And you can say no if it doesn't. Yes, it does. Okay, okay. And if you're unsure about that, that's we're gonna we're gonna start with that that strategy. Here. Okay. It's great news. You don't have to isolate variables on the SAT. You don't. You can use the Desmos graphing calculator to solve for if they're asking you to solve for x or asking you to solve for like just some variable. You can you can graph it and find the answers. I'll show you how to do that. Go and read the second part of that uh, of that rule. For systems of equations, graph both equations and the solutions will be at the intersection of the lines. Yeah, right. So if they're like, hey, what's the solution to this system of equations? They give you two lines. The solution is going to be where the lines intersect. So just graph it and you don't have to do like the elimination method or the substitution method. You don't have to do any fancy algebraic operation. Just graph it. And uh, by far, I'd say this is this rule number two. It's the most powerful, most useful strategy there is uh, for the digital SAT. And it applies to so many questions. And that's where we're going to start today is uh, is focusing on, on using that Desmos calculator. If you can combine rule number one and rule number two, you're going to be unstoppable uh, on this test. Uh, we'll come back to rule number one on, on day two of the course. You'll see why, because we're, we're going to use the Desmos calculator to plug in values for the variables. But let's jump into the questions, and we're going to focus on using this Desmos calculator. And uh, on the whiteboard, you should see a question. Um, I'd love it if Emma... If you would please uh, read question number uh, 14 up on the screen. Okay. Um, it says, z squared plus 10z minus 24 equals zero. What is one of the solutions to the given equation? Okay, okay. Now, when I saw this question the first time, I was like, oh, okay, they're testing me on factoring, right? Is that kind of like where your mind goes when you see a question like this, Emma? 
It's factoring. Are you yeah. familiar with factoring? Yeah, that's, that's kind of the standard way to do it. You've seen questions like this in a math class. You've got to, like, break up this expression here into, like, two sets of, of terms and parentheses, you know what I'm saying? And then you can kind of, like, solve for Z if we break that mm -hmm. up into its factors. You can do that. That's fine, right? If you're, like, really, really comfortable with it. But you don't have to do that at all. Because if we can graph that equation, basically, which we can, right? All we do is just, like, turn that zero into a Y, essentially, and it'll graph. Uh, you know, we'll get a parabola and then we just find out where the Y value is zero on that graph. And then that'll give us uh, the solutions for the equation. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So open up that Desmos calculator and I'm going to bring it up on my end as well. All right. Those of you that are uh, seeing me sharing my screen, do you see my Desmos calculator up on the screen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good, good. Okay. All right. So let's graph this equation. OK, now, the great thing about the Desmos calculator is that you don't even need like most of the time, you don't even need to enter like Y equals. We can just like enter in the left hand side of the equation and it'll graph it for us automatically. So uh, I recommend just let's just turn that Z into an X, right? Because uh, there's not even an option for 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 Z as a as a variable here. So I'm just going to punch this in. And those of you uh, watching, I want you to try this sort of on your end as well. Just type in X squared plus 10x minus 24. And then you could say equals y, but you don't even have to do that. You'll get a parabola. Do you guys see the parabola on my on my screen share? Is that is that clear? We've got a parabola here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yeah, absolutely. Lay, lay it on me. Um, okay, I'm just confused because, so you know, the... SAT is digital now, yeah. right? Yeah. But I didn't know we were allowed to use the Desmos calculator. We can use that during the actual SAT. It's in, yes, yeah. I apologize if I didn't make that clear. It's embedded in uh, in the digital SAT app. You have full access to the Desmos calculator. It's pretty wild. Okay. Yeah, it, it, and this is why I like okay. really, you know, even if you have a graphing calculator, great question. I really recommend getting comfortable with the Desmos just because it's so much easier to use. And I think it's more powerful than 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 most of the calculators. It's just it's just easier to use than most of the calculators that you even have. And um, so yeah, get familiar with it. And that's what the whole like first day of the course. That's what we're focusing on is just getting comfortable with the Desmos calculator. Does that make sense? Yes, it There's does. literally like, yeah, a button you press in the app and they just give you a fully functional Desmos calculator like we've got right here. So, okay. So let's look, we see this parabola, okay? And then um, we know that uh, the Y value has got to be zero, basically, at the solutions for this equation. So all I got to do is look for the X intercepts. We've got one right here. What's the X value, by the way, at that X intercept? What's the X value? Can you guys see it? Zero. Ah, that's not the X value. Remember, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to show up that ordered pair is going to be X comma Y, right? So the X value isn't zero there at that point. Emma, what's the X value at that point? The Y value what, is what, two. Well, actually the X value or, is two, right? Because it's going to show up as X comma oh, Y. Oh, yeah, yeah. So right? It's, yeah. So at that point, the X value is two and the Y value is zero. Yeah. So one of the solutions for that equation has to be two because that's the X value that gives us a zero for Y. Does that make some sense, Emma? Yes. Okay, good, good. We've got another solution here. Okay, let's go to this point here, this other X intercept. What's the X value at that point, at that X intercept? Negative 12. Negative 12. Because the point negative 12 comma zero is another uh, X intercept. So you've got two possible answers here. X could be either 2 or X could be negative 12. And they'll take either one. Does that make some sense? Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, Ruby or Maria, do you guys have any questions about this? Do you Or do you understand how so, how graphing this can solve this? Does that make some sense? Yes yeah. Or no? yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. And now, again, you could factor it if you wanted to. I mean, are you guys comfortable with factoring? Yes or no? What is your What are your thoughts on factoring? How do you feel about it? <laughs> 
It depends. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it depends, right? Like, same. Yeah, if the values are smaller, it's like, okay, I can factor that, right? But, like, I've seen some questions, we'll see some fact that have, like, really, really big factors in the hundreds. And it's like, oh, how do you do the factor? That's going to take forever. If you just graph it, you can you can find the solutions. And if you know the solutions, you know the factors. We'll, we'll talk about what that looks like a little bit later. But just basically, anytime you see an equation, they're asking you to solve for a variable, just set one side equal to zero. Here, they're nice enough to, like, set it equal to zero automatically. But set one side equal to zero, graph the equation, and the x-intercepts are going to be the solutions, okay? This is, like, one, by far one of the most useful uh, strategies I can teach you. So let's keep practicing a little bit more. And I'll put up another question here on the screen. All right, Maria, I would love it if you read uh, question number seven for us, please, up on the screen. 55 divided by x plus 6 equals x. What is the positive solution to the given equation? Ooh, what are we solving for here, Maria? Um, I guess the solution to x that's positive. Yeah, yeah, the positive solution, right? And we can sort of assume, like, there's going to be multiple solutions for this equation, right? Because there's a positive solution. There's probably a negative solution as well, which I think there is. But we need the positive solution, whatever that is. Okay, does that make some sense, what, they're, what we're solving for here? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Now, of course, there's an algebraic way to do this. Okay, there is. Uh, Maria, would you be comfortable doing the algebra here, like solving for X, isolating X? Would you be comfortable doing that or not so much? Um, I think so. Okay, okay. Yeah, I and mean, there's a way to do it because, like, multiply both sides by X plus 6, and then you, like, distribute the X, and then, like, combine some, like, terms, but then you have to factor again. It's a, kind of a complicated path. There's a lot of steps to do it. There's a much easier way to do this using the Desmos calculator, which is kind of surprising because you look at this like, how can you use a, a graphing calculator to solve this? Well, if we take that X term that's on the right-hand side and we subtract both sides, we subtract X from both sides, we can basically put all the terms on the left-hand side and set the right-hand side equal to zero and then just graph the left-hand side. And we can use that to find the solutions for X that give us a zero for Y, basically. Okay. So... Let's do that. I wanna, I'm going to put all the terms on the left-hand side of the equation. We're going to subtract x on both sides. Remember, that's the golden rule of algebra. If we subtract x on both sides, or if we, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you've got to do the other side of the equation. Okay? So we'll get something like this. We'll get 55 over x plus 6 minus x, and then the x's here on the right-hand side cancel out, equals 0. Take a look at that. Maria, does it make sense how I just subtracted x on both sides to get all the terms onto the left-hand side and set the right-hand side equal to zero? Does that make some sense? Yeah, of course. Okay, okay good, good. Ruby, Emma, any questions about that? Does, that? does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay, great, great. Yeah, any, and you might see this, right? Some equations where you've got isolated variable, but like, you know, you've got x terms on both sides of the equation. Just find a way to get all the terms on one side, right? And remember, just whatever you do to one side of the equation, do to the other side of the equation, and you're good. But now that we've got this, we can graph this puppy. And we'll just find out where, which x values give us a zero for y. And then we don't have to do any more algebraic operations, okay? So let's bring up that Desmos calculator. Now, it's a little tricky here. We've got uh, some fractions to enter in. But it's going to look something like this. 55 divided by x plus 6. And then i got to get out of that fraction. There's a little art to just, like, even entering things into Desmos. But you got to make sure that you're doing it accurately. But that's all we need. Again, I could say equals y. That's fine, but you don't need to in Desmos. You can just enter in the left-hand side of the equation. That's good enough. I want you guys to, in Desmos right now, I want you to try entering that. Make sure that you're able to enter that accurately. 55 over x plus 6 minus x. Try that on your own real quick. And then make sure you get something similar to what I got. We got to like two big curves going on here. Maria, were you able to enter that into your uh, Desmos calculator? Yeah, I was, but I didn't get that uh, left-hand curve. I just got the, the first one. Yeah, you might need to zoom out a little bit. Unless there's a zoom in and oh. zoom out function, and that could be that simple, right? Yeah, if you don't, if you yeah, like, you grab, you, yeah, if you enter an equation, like, I'm not seeing anything, just zoom out. That's probably the issue. You see it now? Yes, I do. There you go. Great. Ruby, Emma, are you guys able to graph this uh, this equation as well? 
Yes. Yes. Okay, great, great. Okay. Now let's take a look. So you got to be careful here, right? Remember, we're looking for the X values that give us a zero for Y. Okay, the X values that give us a zero for Y. Maria, do you see which X value gives us a zero for Y? Right? It's tricky because we've got a Y intercept and we've got an X intercept. But which X value gives us a zero for Y? I think we've got two X values that give us a zero for Y. Do you understand my question, Maria? Or not so much? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess a five and a negative 11. Yeah, exactly, right? So when, when we're trying to find the X values that give us a zero for Y, just look at the X intercepts. There's a five right there, right? Because the point five comma zero is on the line. So one of the solutions is five, has to be. And then the other solution is negative 11, because that's the other x-intercept, right? The when you graph the equation, the solutions are always going to be the x-intercepts, always. So be careful here. What's the right answer? Five or negative 11? Negative 11. Read the question again, Maria. Or I guess five, sorry. Right, Just yeah, what is the positive given. solution, right? Do you see it to the given equation? Yeah, if you answer negative 11, you get it wrong, right? We need the positive solution. So be careful and don't lose sight of what the question's asking us. That can be a little bit tricky, but just make sure you answer the positive solution. Questions about that, Maria? Or does that make some sense? Yeah, no, I was just looking at the wrong thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Ruby, Emma, uh, any questions about that? Or does that make sense? It makes sense. Okay. 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 When I saw this question the first time, I mean, I like, oh boy, I mean, I, I just got lost. I didn't know how to do it exactly. It wasn't super clear. Uh, and again, there's an algebraic way to do it, but like, even if you know the algebra, it's going to take a long time. And the more steps you're doing, the likely you are to make a silly operational error. Just let the calculator do the work, graph it, find the X intercepts and you got the answers. Questions about that? Anybody? Or are we good? I'm good. Okay. Great. Yep. Great. Let's keep rolling. All right. All right, Ruby, uh, you are up. We got question number 14 on the screen. Go ahead and read question number 14 for us, please. What is the sum of the solutions to the given equation? Ooh, what are we solving for here? We are solving for x. Yeah, it's more specific than that. We're going to have to solve for x. But look at the focus on the question here, not just the equation. looking for the sum of the solutions. Oh, sum of the solutions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, and what does <laughs> sum mean? What does sum mean? Like all together? Yes. Like <laughs> yeah, sum means right, they add it up, basically. Yes, right? yes. So we're going to find the solutions to the equation, right? And that, that this, this question implies there's multiple solutions for x, right? So we got we to solve for x, yeah. And then we've got to add those solutions together to get the right answer. Okay. Does that question make sense? Yes. Be really, really careful. I mean, it, it's so easy to just like see something and like, oh, I'll solve for X. And then you solve for X and you answer what X is. But it's like, that's not what they're asking here. We've got to, we've got to answer the sum of the solutions. Never lose sight of what the question's asking you here. Okay. Now, of course, we're, we're focusing on, uh, on using the Desmos calculator. We can use Desmos here to solve for this. We don't have to do the algebra. I mean, would, would you feel comfortable doing the algebra on this, Ruby, or not so much? I think I would feel pretty comfortable, yeah. Yeah, right. And there's a way to do it. You can just sort of like distribute the X there on the left-hand side and distribute the 4X yeah. on the right-hand side and combine like terms. And then you've probably got to like factor it again. There's a lot of steps. It's going to take a while, okay? And it's doable, but it's so fast and so easy using Desmos, okay? But again, to be able to solve this using Desmos, uh, we've got to get all the terms on one side of the equation. So what can we do? In just one step, we can get all the terms onto one side of the equation and set the other side equal to zero. How can we do that? Uh, Ruby, do you have any idea how to do that? Um, we can. You can say no if you don't know how to do it. I I, I know. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me guide you through it, right? I mean, we've got this this guy here on the right-hand side, right? We just want to move that over to the left-hand side somehow or just get rid of it on right, the right-hand yeah. side, right? So what can we do to both sides that will get rid of it on the right-hand side? Divide both sides. Ah, see, I wouldn't divide both sides because that would give us a 1 on the right-hand side if we divide by 4x times x minus 7. But if we subtract, subtract. By, right, by 4x times x minus 7, right, on both sides, minus 4x, okay. oops, minus 4x times x minus 7. If we subtract 
on both sides, then we'll get x times x plus 1 minus 56 minus 4x times x minus 7 equals 0, because that right-hand side will just completely cancel out. Does that make sense, uh, Ruby, why we'd subtract in that case? Yes, it does. Okay, okay, good. All right, once we've got this, now we can just graph that left-hand side of the equation, and the x-intercepts, once again, will be the solutions. So let's do that. Let's bring up Desmos. And uh, let me minimize this a little bit. There we go. Okay, clear this out. And uh, Emma and Maria, I want you guys to practice this, entering this in the Desmos on your own as well, using the Desmos calculator you've got. Let's enter this in. We don't even need to like simplify. I think some students will be tempted to do that. Just leave it in the current form. It doesn't matter. Desmos can figure it out. So this can be x times x plus 1. Minus 56. Minus 4x. Times x minus 7. Okay. And uh, Ruby, are, are you entering this into Desmos on your end as well? Or no? Yes, I am. You are? Okay, good. Were you able to enter it in? Yes. All right, you see a parabola. It's a, it's a frowny face parabola. It's going down. Yep. Okay, all right. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on my end. And let's find those x-intercepts because the x-intercepts are our solutions for this equation. Those are the x-values. They give us a true statement. What are the, uh, the x-intercepts there? We've got two of them. They are seven. Yep, seven's one of them. And 2.667. Yeah, 2.667. I mean, it's <laughs> a little bit annoying that's not a whole number. That would be nice. But those are the x-intercepts. Okay. And those are the solutions for x. Now, you got to be really careful. You can't answer seven or 2.667. What's the right answer here? What's the sum of the solutions? Remember, sum just means adding. Right. So what's the sum? And again, you can use Desmos if you want. You don't have to do the arithmetic in your head. If you you know, you can just literally enter in into Desmos seven plus two point six six seven if you're unsure about the arithmetic. Oh. Right? 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 Like it's just, it's that <laughs> handy. You don't have to do any arithmetic on this test. Not anymore. This is a game changer. What's the right answer here? Nine point six six seven. Nine point six six seven. That's your answer. Questions about that, Ruby? Or does that make sense? No, that makes sense. Emma, Maria, any questions about this question? No. no. Listen like carefully. Sense. You don't have to do much algebra on this test. You, you don't even have to do any to get a solid score increase on this test. Guys, to get a 100-point increase on the SAT math section, all I need to get is like eight more questions right than you were getting right before. That's all you need to do. You don't need to be perfect on this test. Like there, there's a couple questions on every digital SAT that I've seen that like I would struggle with if I were seeing it for the first time. I don't know how to solve all of them or not initially. I didn't know how to solve them all. You don't have to be perfect, but like, you know, if you're getting like, you know, just six to eight questions wrong on the test, you can get a score in the 700s. No problem. You don't have to be perfect. Just get the ones right. You should be getting right. And if you can use the Desmos calculator, like all these questions that normally involve like very, very involved algebraic operations that are also very time consuming are really, really easy. Just put all the terms on one side of the equation, set all the other, uh, set the other side to zero, graph it, find the x-intercepts, there's your solutions. Any questions, anybody? No, I'm good. Okay, nope. let's keep rolling. There we go. Okay, Emma, you are up. Go ahead and read uh, question 20 for us, please. Okay. And don't even read the equation. Um, don't even worry with it. Just read the question. <laughs> That's good. Enough. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is the smallest solution to the given equation? Okay. What are we solving for here? Um, I guess we're solving kind of for X. We're solving for X, but it's real specific. Really focus on that question. I mean, and, and literally you probably just reread the question. The smallest, well, the smallest solution. solution, right? Which means there's going to be multiple solutions and one's going to be bigger than the other. We want the smallest solution. Is, is that clear, Emma? Yes. Okay. Good, good. Um, so once again, this is a tough, my boy, I mean, 
<laughs> How would you feel about doing the algebra on this question? How would you feel? It would it? take a while. It would take a while. Even if you know what you're doing. I can, like, oh, I can do it. I'm going to like square both sides and then like, oh, I've got to foil X minus two times X minus two and then combine like terms and then probably refactor. You've got to do all that if you're going step by step. Don't mess with that. Let's put all the terms on one side, set the other side equal to zero and graph it. We've got our answers. Does that make sense, Emma? Yes. Okay, great. Now, how are we going to get all the terms on one side of the equation? What are we going to do here? Subtract the right side. Subtract, from both yeah, sides. exactly. Subtract the right side from both sides. So we're subtracting minus the square root of 3x plus 34. That'll give us, and again, we're like we don't even have to simplify this. We're just gonna be able to punch this in. And those, uh, 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 for for Maria and Ruby, if you want to start entering this into Desmos right now, please do. Well, I write this out on the whiteboard, but it's gonna be x minus two squared. But be really careful as you're entering this in. Make sure that everything's under that square root sign. Minus the square root of three x plus thirty four, all under that square root sign. And that's going to equal zero because the right-hand side is canceled out. Okay. Does that make sense? That's how we put everything on the left-hand side. Is that pretty clear to everybody? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's graph it. The trickiest part on this question really is just entering it in like accurately into Desmos. That's the trickiest part, which is why you've got to practice this. You don't want to be figuring out Desmos like the day of the test. You really got to practice using it. Got to use those parentheses as well. X minus two. And square it. Now make sure you're squaring X minus two in parentheses, right? You're not squaring stuff outside of the square root sign. That uh, exponent is inside the root sign. And then we'll get outside the root sign. Minus 3x plus 34, all inside the square root sign. That all equals 0. So now we're just looking for the x-intercepts. That is a funky-looking graph, by the way. Do you guys see that? It's like a weird V-shape or like a big check mark. That's kind of what it looks like. Were you guys able to graph that? Yes. Yep, you got it? Okay. Was anyone not able to graph it? Everybody was able to graph it. Okay, and anybody watching the recording, again, pra you got to practice this on your own. you got to practice just, like, accurately entering stuff into Desmos. There is a little art to it, but you'll, you'll figure it out. It's not too complicated. Okay. Emma, let's, uh, let's find the solutions. How do we find the solutions now that we've graphed it? We find the x. Yeah. Intercepts. Find the x-intercepts, because those are the x values that are going to give us a zero for y. What are the x-intercepts? Uh, three, negative three and 10. Yeah, negative three and 10 are x-intercepts. So what's the right answer? What's the Negative solution? three. Yeah, negative three is the smallest solution. Booyah. Questions about that? Emma? No. No. Ruby, Maria, any questions about that or no? No. All right. No, I'm good. This is a really like high level difficulty question. I think very few students are going to solve. And even those that know how to do it, like we're talking like two, three minutes, maybe like going through all the steps, trying to like, it's a very involved question, but you can solve with Desmos in like, man, like, like 45 seconds, less than a minute. It's no problem. So that's by far the best way to do it. All right, let's put the next question up on the screen. All right. And Maria, you are up. Go ahead and read uh, question number 22 when you see that on the screen, please. How many distinct real solutions does the given equations have? Ooh, what are exactly. we solving? Yeah. Yeah. What are we solving? Sorry. For? Yeah. Yeah. You're good. What are we solving for, Maria? Just the number of real solutions. Yeah. The, real number. Yeah. The number of real solutions. Now, what's funny about this, like on the old SAT that have questions like this, and they're testing you on something called the discriminant. Um, are you guys familiar with the discriminant? Have you heard of that before? That it, it, it helps you determine how many solutions there are to a quadratic equation. Have you guys heard of that? Yes or no? Yes. You've heard of the discriminant? Yeah. Have you, has anybody not heard of the discriminant? 
No. Yeah, you've not, you've not heard no. of it? Yeah, on the old SAT, you needed to know it because there was that whole section three without the calculator, and sometimes you had to solve this like step by step. You don't have to do that anymore on the digital test. Uh, you can just graph this guy, right? Because the solutions to this equation, just like on all the other questions we've been working on, are going to be the x-intercepts of that graph of that equation. So you don't have to go through the you know. And again, if you've never heard of this screen, you're watching this recording, like don't even worry about it. You, you don't have to know that anymore. Just graph it and see how many x-intercepts there are. If there's two x-intercepts, there's two solutions. If there's one x-intercept, there's one solution. If there's no x-intercepts, there's no solutions. Does that make sense, guys? Why the number of x-intercepts is going to tell us how many solutions there are? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So on the digital SAT, if you find, if you have something that doesn't have a solution, what would you put in to the answer? Well, you tell, look at the answer choice here. Which one says that there's no solutions? Yeah. Okay. I see that now. Right? Answer choice D, Zero. right? Zero solutions. That's it, right? Answer choice C is kind of silly. Like, how is there going to be infinitely many solutions for a quadratic? That's not really a thing. By the way, you could have a system of equations with infinitely many solutions if the two equations are equal. That is a thing. But if we've just got like one quadratic equation, it's going to be a parabola. There's not going to be infinite solutions. So C is silly. But let's just graph it, okay? And we don't even have to adjust the equation. We just enter it in as it is right now. So guys, try that right now on your own. Punch it into Desmos. We've got 5x squared plus 10x plus 16. Oh, interesting. Were you guys able to graph that on your end on Desmos? Yes. Yeah, you got it? Okay. Maria, were you able to graph that on your end? Are you doing it right now, Maria? Sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, good, good. You, you've got it graphed? Yeah. All right, well, let me start here. How many x-intercepts do we have, Maria? How many x-intercepts? We have zero x-intercepts. So how many real solutions does the equation have? None. It has none real solutions. Correct answer is answer choice D, zero. Done. Don't have to use the discriminant. Don't have to do any fancy operations. You graph it and you see it. If you understand that the x-intercepts are the solutions and there's no x-intercepts, so there's no solutions. Any questions about this, Maria? Um, no. Ruby, Emma, any questions about this? No. All right. No. Would you have solved it this way before this course or would you have done the discriminant or just like not known how to solve this question? I would have done the discriminant. You would have done the discriminant, right? I know, I know. It's tough, right? Because, like, you see something that looks familiar, and you're, like, you go into math class mode. Don't do it. Like, anytime you see a question that's, like, you're sol we're talking about the solutions to an equation or just solving for an equation, just ask yourself, can I just graph this to find the answer? And, and generally, you can. Maybe always you can. And it's just well, before fast we and can... easy and accurate. Before we couldn't use a calculator. I know, I know, right on the old page. I know, like this is such a game changer. I'm telling you, like I did some, <laughs> I did some recordings like in in the summer on the digital SAT, and I was still doing it like the old way. They're on YouTube. I mean, you can check them out. Like, and they're okay. The solutions are good. They just take forever. But like, it, it took me several months of like just trying to find the easiest way to solve these questions. But I figured it out, and I'm using the Desmos all over the place now, in a way I, I didn't before. I see how to use it now. Um, it took me a while, but if you guys can practice just thinking in these terms and like making it your instinct to go to the Desmos calculator, like it's almost like cheating. Does it feel like cheating a little bit? What we're doing here, guys? Does it feel like cheating? Just a little bit. A yeah. little bit, right? <laughs> a little bit, but it feels good. It should, right? Because it's so easy. I mean, how are you guys feeling about the SAT right now at the moment? How are you feeling about the test? Pretty good, actually. Yeah, you should. You should. There's just not that much algebra. If you understand what the question's asking you. You understand what things mean, and you can use this Desmos tool. The whole test opens up. It's so much easier. It's so much easier than the old SAT. It really is. So let's keep practicing. Like, I, I didn't even fit all the questions that are on the digital SAT that, that use the Desmos calculator. I had to choose amongst them because there's so many. All right, Ruby, you are up. Go and read uh, question number 16 when you see that on the screen. What is the minimum value of the given function? Ah, okay, what do we solve for you, Ruby? 
the minimum yeah, value. Yeah, the, the minimum value, right? Like, <laughs> this is nice. Like, the, the digital SAT, the questions are so point blank, right? This is so, It's so different from the old SAT. We'd have to, like, read a paragraph before you even, like, could figure out what you're solving for here. It's just like, okay, what's the minimum value? That's it. Now, what does minimum mean, Ruby? Let's make that really clear. What's minimum? Mean? I want to say the smallest, but I know that. No, that's it. That's oh. it. I mean, minimum means the smallest. That's it. That's it. We're looking for the smallest value for the function. Okay. Now, if you're like really comfortable with like quadratic equations or just algebra in general, some students might be able to look at this and just like be able to figure out what the minimum value is. Maybe if you look at that equation, there's a way to think about it the right way. Don't even mess with that. Just go to Desmos, just graph it, and let's find the smallest value. That's all we need to do. So I want everybody to do that right now. Open up Desmos, punch that equation in. We don't even need to adjust it. We just enter in the right-hand side. So let's do it. X squared plus 55. It's a quadratic, so no big shock. We're going to get a parabola, which is what we see here. Okay. Notice it's a it's a happy face parabola. By the way, I want to point this out. Like, if the term in front of the x squared is positive, and you might be like, "Well, there's no term for the x squared, Mr. Two. I'm like, "Well, there's an implied one, right?" But if if the term in front of the x squared is positive, and here it's positive x squared, then you're going to get a smiley face, happy face parabola. If the term in front of the x squared is negative, you get a frowny face parabola. It's going to go down. Okay, so no big shock here. We get a parabola, and it's a smiley face parabola because x squared is positive. Ruby, you should be able to look at this and tell me what's the smallest value. What's the minimum value of the function? Zero. No. It's not. What? Let's find, I'm going to go to that point. That's the minimum value. That's code, by the way, for the vertex of the parabola. So let's go to that vertex. And you can look at my screen that I'm sharing right now. You can see I have trouble finding that vertex. But that vertex is the point... 0, 0,55. So I get the instinct to be like, oh, the smallest value is 0. Well, that's the x value at that point. When they say, what's the minimum value of the function, the values of the function, that's impl they're implying the outputs of the function. That's the y values. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. yes. And maybe that's where you get tripped up here. I'm glad we're going over this question. Yeah, I was going to A lot with of x. students going to answer 0, yeah. right? That's the x value. Of the function. We're not okay. talking about the minimum input for the function. Yeah. We're talking about the minimum output. And I don't even think zero is the, and that's another thing about two. Zero is not even the minimum input, right? Because x could be negative one or negative two or negative three or negative four or negative, I mean, like it could be lots of negative numbers, which would be smaller than zero. Does that make sense why it doesn't make sense that zero is the smallest value, right? It, yeah, it's not even the smallest yeah. x value. But 55 is the smallest output, the smallest f of x, or in this case, g of x. Value. Right. That's the yes. lowest point. Okay. Okay. So find the vertex. Yeah. So if they're talking about the minimum or the maximum of the function, it's we're always talking about the y values or the f of x, or in this case, the g of x value. Okay. In day two, we'll talk. We'll spend a little more time talking about functions like inputs and outputs, and you have to kind of be able to interpret what that means, and that's helpful here. But does that make sense? Well, you can just look at the graph and find the lowest value of y or g of x, and in this yes. case, it's negative fifty or it's uh, it's fifty five. Yes, okay. it does. Yeah. Any questions, uh, Emma or Maria? Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah, okay. makes sense. Great, great. Just graph it and see it. But like C and D are just silly. That don't, don't make any sense. Um, so, you know, it, it, just looking at this equation, you know, the, the, the y-intercept of an equation often is just like that constant, you know, at the end of an equation. Be aware of that. I don't know if that's even super helpful to like try to like analyze like the meaning of the notation of the function. Um I mean, it would work out here, but uh, just graph it and see it. <laughs> just graph it and see it. It's probably the best way to do it. All right. Let's keep rolling. All right. Well, this question a little, it looks a little more complicated. Maybe it is. But with Desmos, it's going to be pretty easy. We think about it the right way. I'm going to go ahead and read question number 25 when you see that on the screen, please. Um, in the xy plane, the graph of the equation y equals negative x squared plus 9x minus 100 intersects the line y equals c at exactly one point. What is the value of c? Ooh, okay, this is a little more complicated here. This is a little more complicated. What are we solving for here, Emma? What are we solving for? Uh, c. Yeah, we're solving for the value of c. 
And notice that like c is the value here in this equation here. It's in, in the equation y equals c, right? It's going to be some number, right? Now, I don't yeah. know if you're familiar with like graphing lines like this. Like if y just equals some value, like that's going to be a horizontal line. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be running through the y-axis. Like y equals 1 is just a horizontal line that goes like right through 1 on the y-axis. Or y equals 2 is just a horizontal line that goes through 2 on the y-axis, just a horizontal line, straight line. Does that make a little bit of sense? <laughs> Are you familiar with that? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, if we graph these, which is what we're going to do. We're going to use Desmos here. We don't have to do any algebra. We're going to graph this parabola, and then we're going to plug in the answer choices for the C value for this other line. And we're just going to see which of those intersect at exactly one point. That's all we need to do. Does that make some sense, Emma? Yes. Ruby and Maria, does that make some sense here? Why we can just graph this parabola, graph this line, and see where they intersect at one point. Does that make sense, lady? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Let's do it. All right. So open up Desmos. Punch them in on, on your end, on your own. I'm going to do the same thing, and we'll check and make sure we're on the same page here. All right. So let's start with the parabola. Notice the value in front of the uh, x squared is negative here. It's negative x squared. So it's going to be a frowny face parabola. We know that. But again, we can enter it in. We'll see it. 9x minus 100. And I'm not seeing anything yet, so I'm going to zoom out. Oh, there we go. All right. I see that frowny face parabola. And then, once we've got the parabola, we're going to plug in these answer choices for C into the second equation. Now here, I think we actually need to say Y equals here, because if we just enter in a number, it won't graph it. We've got to enter it as Y equals. So I'm going to punch in Y equals negative 481 divided by Four. Oh, there we go. And I'll wait for you. Uh, I'll wait for you, ladies, to enter that in. But I see a parabola, and I see a line. Let me know when you guys are there. Emma, are you entering uh, entering these equations in on your end? Yes. Okay. Let me know when you got it. I yeah. Okay, so right. you see Friday face parabola, and you see a line. Yes. Now the question is here, do they intersect at exactly one point? No, two. No, they intersect at two points. They intersect at two points, so it can't be answer choice A. There's two points of intersection. Answer choice A is okay. gone. Ruby, Maria, were you able to graph these as well? Do you see the same thing? You see two points of intersection? Yes. Okay. Okay, Maria, you got this as well? Or was that you, Maria? That might be you. <laughs> Let's just go to the next, uh, we'll go to the next point. Now, we can leave Sorry, the... Sorry, yeah. Yeah, you got it? Okay, good. Uh, we can leave the parabola up, right? Because the parabola, the, that quadratic doesn't change. We're just changing uh, the C value for the second equation. So, like, we don't even need to, like, we'll just erase this. Press delete and erase that value. And now we're entering in negative 100 for the C value. Emma, do the same. How many points mm -hmm. of intersection do we have, Emma, when y two. equals negative 100? We see two points of intersection again. So it's not answer choice B. Let's try answer choice C. Now, this is these are ugly fractions here, but we're just entering it in Desmos. So negative 319 divided by 4. Oh, hey, yo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Have you done it, Emma? Yes. How many points of intersection do we have? One. One point of intersection. I'd feel pretty comfortable stopping there. It's answer choice C. Because that gives us one point of intersection. Yep. Questions about that? Or not so much? Nope. No? Ruby, Maria, any questions about that? I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, great. Now, if you want to be like extra careful, and it's probably not a bad idea, you've got the time to do it, especially if you're just like using the Desmos calculator like we are all throughout this test. You're going to have time. I mean, you can punch in, you know, negative nine over two just to double check. Maybe you missed something, maybe you entered in something wrong. I don't even see. And there's no point of intersection for negative nine over two. So we can confirm for sure that it's answer choice C. Um, I, I think I saw this uh, on an, on some other YouTube videos with other students, and I did it the algebraic way, man. Like, I what did I do? Like, I think I, I plugged in 
uh, I, I set the y values equal to zero on the left hand side and did some algebra and like try to solve for x and just like oh no I did the discriminant I think I used the discriminant here just super they don't need to do any of that just use Desmos see what they understand at one point you got it but this is a high level difficulty question if you're not using the Desmos calculator if you're using it it's a freaking breeze questions no I'm good thank all you right. all right let's keep rolling Hmm. We'll do a few more questions, then we'll take a break here in just a little bit coming up. This is a tough question. That's a tough one. I think, Emma, you did the last one. So this is, uh, this is Maria. Maria, go and read question number 20 for us, please. One of the factors of 2x cubed plus 42x squared plus 208x is x plus b. Where b is positive, where b is a positive constant, what is the smallest possible value of b? Ooh, this is a tough question. This is a tough question here. What are we solving for here with this question, Maria? I mean, like a positive factor, like a small positive factor of b. Yeah, basically, we're going to have to find the factors of this messy expression right here. We're going to find those factors. And, and, you know, we were talking about factors a little bit before. It's going to be, you're going to get some sets of terms in parentheses. You know what I'm saying? We're going to factor it here. It's a cubic function or cubic expression. So we're really going to get three different factors. Although one of them I think is going to be X. We'll talk about that in a minute. But, but, um, but once you know the factors, then we'll pick the smallest value of B, right? Because one of the, we're going to be able to express some of these factors as X plus B. That's sort of the idea. So th there is an algebraic way to do this if you're comfortable with factoring. I think I was talking with Ruby and Emma about this earlier as well, right? Like uh, some of you might be familiar with factoring. Do, would you ladies feel comfortable, Ruby or Emma, would you feel comfortable factoring this or not so much? I mean, I think I'd be pretty comfortable doing it, uh -huh. but it would take it's me gonna a take, while. It's going to take, you're going to be testing a lot right. of values. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. Okay. So forget that. Forget about factoring. There are very few questions you do need, you know, on the digital SAT we actually need to factor. And here's how we can use the Desmos to solve this. Here's how we can use it to solve this question. If we can figure out the solutions to this equation, I know it's an equation, but we can set it equal to zero and, and solve it. If we set it equal to zero, we can find the solutions. Once we know the solutions, we can figure out the factors because there's a close relationship between the solutions to an equation and the factors of an equation. Okay. And let me give you a, a, a real specific example of, of, of what that means. Let's say the um, let's say the solutions to an equation are x equals two or x equals three. Okay, let's say those are the solutions. If those are the solutions to an equation, we know the factors of the equation. The factors of the equation would be x minus two and x minus three. The reason for that is because if that's equal to zero, we can plug in a two and get a zero for the equation for the, the left-hand side of the expression, or we plug in a three, we also get a zero for the left-hand side of the equation. Does that make a little bit of sense, ladies, why if we know the solution is two or three, the factors are x minus two and x minus three? Does that make any sense? You can say no if it doesn't. I'll show you another example here in just a moment. It makes sense for me. Yes. Yeah, we got it. Maria, does that make any sense or not so much? Yeah, it does. Okay, okay. Let me give you another example here. Let's say the solutions to an equation are x equals, um, now let's do negative 1, or x is negative 2. Then we know the factors of that equation. And I'm just making these up here. It's not directly related to the question, although that's an example of uh, solutions and factors in the relationship. The factors would be x plus 1 and x plus 2 if that's set equal to zero. Does that make sense? Yeah. If we know the solutions, we know the factors. Okay. So we see a question like this. Let's just solve. Let's set the right-hand side equal to zero. We'll solve for X. And once we know the, the solutions, we'll be able to figure out the factors. Basically, you're, you're, you're taking the solutions and doing X minus that solution. And that's the factor. That's essentially what's happening here. So let's practice that. I'm going to bring this up on Desmos. 
And ladies, I want you to do this on your end as well. We'll just graph this guy 2x to the power of 3. Now, you're going to need to use this uh, a to the power of b function to do a cubic here. Okay, do you see that a to the power of b button on Desmos? Do you ladies see that? Yes. Yeah, you got to use that to raise a variable to the power of 3. Plus 42 x squared plus 208 x. Oh, there we go. We got a funky line here. We'll zoom in a little bit. There we go. Let me zoom out. Zoom back in. Okay. All right, Maria, were you able to graph that? Yes, that okay, was. Okay, good, good. All right, so now how do we find the solutions to this equation that we've set equal to zero? Well, we just find the x-intercepts. And what are the x-intercepts of this equation? I think we got three of them. Um, yeah, zero, zero. Yeah. Negative three, zero and negative eight. Yeah, those are the x-intercepts. So what are the solutions? Let's be, let's just, we're just distinguishing here between x and y. So what are the x values that give us a zero for y? What are they? Um, x plus eight and x plus 13. Yeah, yeah, those, those are going to be the, fa yeah, those are the x. factors. Yeah, those, those are the factors. You're right. We'll get, we'll get to that in a second. I just want to make it really clear what the solutions are. The solutions are going to be uh, zero or negative 8 or negative 13. Okay? So now you know the factors. You're absolutely right. What are what are the factors again? Um, x and x plus 8 and x plus 13. x plus 8 and x plus 13. Absolutely. A lot of students, even if they are able to like, so, you know, graph this and solve it kind of like we are, a lot of students are going to think that the factors are x minus 8 and x minus 13. Does that make sense why those aren't the factors? Minus 8 and minus 13 are the solutions, but the factors have to be x plus 8 and x plus 13. Does that make sense, ladies, why that's the case? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you know you got to yes. plug those values in for x and get a 0 for y. But those are our factors. Okay. Now that we've got the factors, Maria, we can find the smallest possible value for B. Remember, B is a positive constant. Constant is just a fancy name for a number that doesn't change. So what's the smallest possible value for B, Maria? See how to answer this? this oh, I guess it's just X, no? Well, I mean, you can't really answer X on the SAT. Because you can't so answer a. variables. What is it? A? It, the answer is 8. Absolutely. That's the smallest possible value, right? Because one of the factors is x plus b, right? Some students might want to answer 0 here because, like, well, x is a factor, but 0 is not a positive constant. 0 is not a positive number. It's neither positive nor negative. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's got to be the factor is either x plus 8 or x plus 13. But the smallest value for b is, in this case, 8. And that's the right answer. Woo! So it's still tough. Even if you're using the Desmos calculator, you got to be able to sort of interpret what things mean here in this question, not lose sight of what the question's asking you. But do you see how we can solve for the factors if we just set this equal to zero and find the solutions? That's all we need to do. We don't didn't need to do any fancy factoring. Graph it, find the x-intercepts. We got the solutions. We got the solutions. We got the factors. Questions about this, Maria? No, I don't have okay. any. Uh, Ruby, Emma, questions about this? No. Okay. Nope. This is a tough question. I mean, when I saw this first, I just didn't know how to solve it. I wasn't confident with the factoring. I probably skipped it <laughs> when I was first going over this test. I was like, oh, I'll come back to that later. And then I never did. But, uh, but once you realize you can just graph it and find the solutions, it's a breeze. Okay. All right. I think I've got two more questions here. Oh, yeah. One of the things I see they're testing us on more and more on the digital SAT is uh, translations of lines. 
like shifting them up and down and left and right and stuff like that. Uh, Ruby, I would love you to read uh, question number nine for us, please, when you see it on the screen. The function of f is defined by fx equals 7x cubed. Mm -hmm. In the xy plane, the graph of y equals gx is the result of shifting the graph of y equals fx down two units. Which equation defines function g? Ooh, what are we solving for here, Ruby? The equation that defines function g. Yeah, well, the, the equation that defines g, and g is the yeah. result of taking y equals f of x and shifting it down two units. Which is basically a fancy way of saying that the g function is the same as the f of x function. This guy right here is just shifted down two units. Does that make okay. some sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you're like really comfortable with like translations and transformations or whatever they call it, like you might be able to figure this out. It's not too complicated. But I wouldn't even go there because like sometimes what seems obvious with translations or transformations isn't obvious. Like we just gra we're going to graph f. We'll graph 7 times x to the power of 3. And then we'll graph the answer choice and see which one is the graph of f just shifted down two units. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, just make it concrete and see it. <laughs> That's just the easiest way to do it. So let's do it. All right. I want everybody else to do this as well on your end of the Desmos calculator. We'll just graph the f function. Real easy to enter in. It's just 7 times x to the power of 3. you got to use that a to the power of b function again. And you get some, like, weird kind of, like, little curvy thing here. And then we just graph the answer choices as well. So we're going to do answer choice A, that's 7 over 2 times x to the power of 3. Okay. Ruby, were you able to graph both of those on your end? Are you still working on it? I am almost yeah. done. <laughs> you're good, you're good. And uh, Emma and Maria, I want you to practice entering these in on your end as well. Again, we can set these equal to y if we want to. You just don't need to in Desmos, which is really nice. You can just enter in the expression on one side. That's good enough. Okay, you're there. Okay, so is uh, g of x, the second equation, is that the result of shifting f of x down two units? No. No, it looks like it shifted over to the right a little bit, maybe, but it's not shifted down. I mean, they have the same, like, x-intercept at zero, so it's just not shifted down, very simply. Okay, so let's try answer choice b, which is 7 times x, ooh, 7 times x to the power of 3 over 2, so we've got a, a fractional exponent here. Again, you got to use that a to the power of b button. But just make sure the exponent is 3 over 2. And let me know when you got it. Okay, I have it. Okay, great. Is that uh, f of x shifted down two units, that second equation? No. No, it's not. In fact, again, they have the same x-intercept. It's just not. It's just a different, like, different graph. It's not even a curve. It's like a, I don't know. Well, it's a curve going up, but it's, it's just not the same shape. And it's not shifted down two units. So, nope, it's not b. So we know it's not a. We know it's not b. Let's try C. And there that's 7x to the power of 3 plus 2. Oh. Let me know when you got it. Okay. You got it? Is that shifted down two units? Yes. Mm, well, oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, hold on. It's a difference of two units. Hold on. And, and this is where Desmos yeah, is nice yeah. because they've graphed the equations in different colors. So I don't know what you're seeing okay. on mine, but mine, if you look at the screen share. Yeah, mine was zoomed in, like, zoom. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. zoomed in too much, and so it was like one line. Oh, okay. Was, yeah. And then I zoomed out. Yeah, that's fine. yeah, you got yeah. to be careful the distinction between them. But in mine, and, and I want to point this out. So my original equation, the f equation, is in red, and then yeah. if you look at the screen share, and then the second equation, the g g function, is in blue, and my g function is above the f function, so that would be shifted up two units. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. okay. Well, let's try answer choice D. It's minus two. Oh yeah. Let me know when you're there.
Okay. Are you there? Yes. Is that second equation uh, f of x shifted down two units? Yes. It is. It is. Yeah. It's just a difference of two units there. One of them has a y-intercept at zero. The second one has a y-intercept at negative two. It's shifted down two units. Questions about that? Anybody? No. Okay. Who? No. Who did that last one? Was that you, Ruby? You did the last, this one right here? Yes. Okay. Okay, great. Great. And we got one more question before a little break. And uh, it's going to be Emma. Is up. A lot of students are going to look at that. They're going to try to, like, figure it out sort of just based on interpreting the, the algebra. And you can do it that way. I just really recommend just graphing it and seeing it. That's what I recommend doing. All right. Emma, go ahead and read question number 16 for us, please. Okay. Uh, line P is defined by 2Y plus 18X equals 9. Line R is perpendicular to line P in the XY plane. What is the slope of line R? Ooh, what are we solving for here, Emma? <laughs> Um, I guess the slope of line R. The slope of line R, yeah, which is different from line P, right? Line P, they give us the equation of line P. And we got to find the slope of line R, which is perpendicular to that equation. Does that question make some sense what we're solving for here? Yes. Okay, okay. Now, there's a way to do this algebraically, okay? Like, if we put this equation here, you know, of line P, into y equals mx plus b form, which we could do, okay? We would find the slope of that line. And then the line perpendicular to that line is going to have the negative inverse slope. Are, are you familiar with perpendicular lines or how to calculate perpendicular lines? Are you familiar with that or not so much? Yes. Okay. It, it, you probably heard it before. I mean, you just like <clears throat> flip the numerator and denominator of the original slope and then make it negative. It's called the negative inverse. Yeah. And it, it, there's, it's an operation. You can do it. Okay. You can do it mm -hmm. if you want. But I don't even go there. Again, like the more steps you're doing algebraically, the more... Likely it is you're just going to make an operational error somewhere, lose a negative or something like that. Like, it's just so easy to mess up when you're doing a lot of steps. So all we need to do here is just graph the original equation P. We don't even need to put it in Y because I'm supposed to be formed. Just like leave it as it is in Desmos. And then we'll make some lines that have a slope of the answer choices. Like we'll make, we'll make a line with a slope of negative 9. We'll make a, slope, uh, a line with a slope of negative 1 over 9. Uh, we'll make one with a slope of, of 1 over 9 and, and a slope of 9 and see which one's perpendicular to P. That's it. Let's talk about what perpendicular means, by the way. Do you guys know what perpendicular means? You familiar with that term? Emma, you familiar with that? Yeah, it's like um, straight across or like right. Yeah, straight. Yeah, you're going to get right angles all the way around. Like this would, yeah. this would be, those two lines are perpendicular there. If you have like 90 degree angles sort of like all the way around, that's perpendicular. It's not just that they're crossing, but they're crossing with like perfect squares, 90 degree yeah. angles all the way around. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, great. So let's bust out Desmos. Let's graph P. Again, we don't even need to change the form. Just leave it as it is. It's so nice. Thank you, Desmos. 18x equals 9. Okay. And then we got a line. Notice it's got a negative slope, which might be surprising to some students because they look at this equation of P and they're like, but it's 18x. Why is the slope negative? 18 is positive. Well, it's not in Y equals MX plus B form. If we put it in y equals mx plus b form, we would have a negative slope or a negative m value in front of the x. But again, yeah, we need to go there. Just graph it and see it. Okay. Now let's test the answer choices. Okay. And we're just going to come up with a line. We're just going to make up a line that has a slope of negative 9. Now, Emma, do you have any idea, like, could you come up with an equation that has a slope of negative 9? Would you, do you know how to do that or not so much? Um, I'm not, like... I don't know. Yeah, yeah let's, let's talk about y equals mx plus b form real quick. Have you heard of y equals mx plus b form? Is that something you're familiar with? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. So, like, the b value in y equals mx plus b form is, like, your y-intercept. Okay, it's helpful to know this on some questions. Mm -hmm. Rarely do we need to even go there again if we got Desmos, but, but it could be helpful. And then the m value is your slope. That's yeah. it. So, basically, like, all we need to do is just, like, take these answer choices and plug them in for, like, the m value, the slope into an equation. And, and let's just make the b value zero. So like to test answer choice A, we could graph the equation y equals like negative 9x. Is it clear y equals negative 9x has a slope of negative 9? Is that clear? Yes. Okay, good. So we've got two lines. We've got a green line and we've got a purple line. 
Okay, and you can see this on the screen share. I recommend entering this into Desmos and just practicing it as well. Let me know when you got that entered in. I have it. Okay. So do we have two perpendicular lines here? Yeah. Uh, no, they're no, parallel. They're parallel lines, right? They don't even intersect. I could zoom out a little bit and double mm -hmm. check. But yeah, those guys aren't even intersecting. They're, they're, they're parallel lines. So it's not answer choice A. Does that make sense? Yes. Great. Let's uh, test answer choice B. Now, what are we going to enter in Y equals what to test answer choice B? Uh, one ninth X. Ne negative. Yeah, one negative ninth. one ninth X, right? Yeah. Oh. Does that give us two perpendicular lines? Um. Um. Well, they intersect. They intersect. Are they perpendicular? No. That's another question. Right? No, they're, they're not. not quite. Yeah, they they're not quite uh, perpendicular. They're close, but not quite. Like the angles yeah. have to all be equal. They've all got to be ninety degree angles here. I'm going to have any ninety degree angles here between the green line yeah. and the and the purple line on the screen share. Does that make sense? B is a little tempting, but they're just not perpendicular. If you know what perpendicular means, yeah. Does that make sense? All right. Let's try answer choice C. So we're just taking negative one ninth and just making it positive. I'm just going to delete the negative sign here. Oh, that did not work. Hold on. Ah. Oh, that sounds promising. Oh, hey yo, how's that look? Answer choice C. That looks perpendicular. That looks perpendicular. I feel pretty comfortable stopping at C. Mm -hmm. And it is C. We can double check with uh, answer choice D, and I'd, I'd recommend it. Just making sure you didn't mess something up somewhere, didn't enter something wrong. Let's double check. So that'd be Y equals negative nine X. Oh, not even close to perpendicular there. Yeah. If you try that, right? So it's got to be answer choice C. Have we done any algebra yet today? Have we done any? Not really. Not really. I mean, like we've subtracted stuff from both sides of an equation, <laughs> like in order yeah. to graph it. But other than that. Like all these questions we've done, and we've gone over some really high level difficulty questions. Again, if you don't have the Desmos calculator, extremely high level difficulty that most students aren't going to get. But if you can think about it the right way, understand what the question's asking you, and use this Desmos calculator, it's just not that bad. It's just not that bad. Any questions about this, Emma? No. Nope. Ruby, Maria, any questions about this question? Does it make sense? No, it makes sense. sense. Okay, amazing. You guys have been awesome. Let's uh, let's take a little break here. Uh, we'll take like a five minute break. Come back, and uh, we'll solve some more questions using this Desmos calculator. All right. Okay. All right. See you in a few minutes.